we call a level two leader, they are actually confident and competent in all four fields. So both they know how to enter a new field. How, what were some of the things that we were looking at entering a new field, some of the tools that we gave you? Yeah, so that would be like a transition. What was the, some of the, how do we engage, where was an entry point? House of Peace. House of Peace, great. So we got something like the House of Peace, what else? And you got the Oikos map. So there's a couple simple tools on the clear path. Second of all, we looked at the, the gospel, we looked at the gospel field. What do we give you? The three, the three circles. So what are some practical things now that we could use or we could train level two leaders to begin to make disciples and form churches? So in field three, we had 411, which is a fantastic place to start because immediately you equip them to begin to reach out to their friends and their family. They know their identity. Ian Kai says it's important within the first two minutes that you, you lead somebody to the Lord to instill kingdom DNA that they're called to reach out to others. What else? Commands of Christ. And then we've got the the church as we got the church field or the gather field. What tools we got for that? Yeah, so we got the healthy church circle. What else? We've got the handy church. Handy church starter guide. Well, where do you put the three thirds? Is it sort of in both? All of it, yeah. And then you get the three thirds up, look back, look up, and look forwards. So I'm gonna have, this is there's some pretty simple tools that you can give L2 leaders. But this is where the exciting part begins to happen between L2 and L3 where L3 has to do with addition. You're just simply adding people to the church, but now you're beginning to multiply. And this is where an L3 is starting to see not only just one church planted, but now the second generation, third generation, fourth generation and beyond. So a level three leader, where, what, uh, what do they need to be confident and competent in? Which fields? So, do they need to be confident and competent in entering new fields? Yeah. Sharing the gospel? Mm -hmm. Making disciples? And? Forming churches? And these ones are now leaders of leaders. So they've got a stream of people that they're beginning to invest into. So we call this a church planting multiplier, CPM. Now a level four, a level four leader is what we would call a movement trainer. So same sort of deal. Do, do you include these as well on this side? Or just the same all the way, yeah. So movement trainer, this is the, the kind of the decision point, whether you want to, at what point do you want to move an L3 to an L4? An L3 is on the ground, they're drilling down locally to begin to see multiple streams of four generation uh, churches and disciples. But a level four comes externally, so this is the level four leader, to be able to help existing churches to begin to get to fourth generation and beyond. So at the moment, this is probably the most effective way to be able to do inter, uh, intercultural uh, evangelism. There's probably not a huge need at the moment to, to literally start from L1 to be able to enter. I mean, I mean, most places in the world, there are some groups where you're going to actually have to, you know, maybe take a, 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 an English speaker to, to learn the language and be invested into that culture. But at the moment where we're at, we have pockets and groups of Christians and churches that we can work with. 
all over the world. And so this is an ideal situation for a level four leader is that they can come in and help existing churches on the ground to be able to multiply to fourth generation and beyond. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then a level five leader is basically what we call the Apostle Paul or uh, strategy coordinator. <laughs> so these, this is the, the exciting part where not only are they seeing one of multiple streams of fourth generation churches uh, multiplying, but you're actually seeing multiple streams of fourth generation all over. The, and this is what you see with Apostle Paul. You see where the gospel rang out in Thessalonica. You saw, you, you know, in Ephesus where the entire region was, uh, had the opportunity to be able to hear the gospel. Multiple streams of fourth generation that he could actually come to the end of his life and say, now there is no more place for me to work. So this is a strategy coordinator where they are seeing multiple streams of fourth generation and beyond. Is that pretty exciting? Mm. And it's a different segment. Different segments, yeah. You have different language groups, different nations. And they help identify, yeah, help identify where there are the gaps. So past this point, they say that you should be spending 60 to 90 days with key leaders and be able to, in order to be able to see a movement, especially L3 and beyond. So this is what, uh, this is the bell curve in terms of time investment. That we've observed in different movements. And right here is the sweet spot where you're going be before, uh, where you're going from, at this stage, if you just got a church, what's happening? One church, what's happening in terms of growth? Addition. Addition, yeah. But what happens when you start to see L3 leaders and beyond? Multiplication. Multiplication. The gospel is multiplied now. Now, at this, at this level, it's not about what the single individual can do, but it's about what, it's kind of like a, a parent, it's not just about your kids, it's about your kids and your grandkids and beyond. So it's not just relying on the single individual charisma or leadership ability of that one leader, but now it's multiple generations that are pushing forward. So they say that uh, in order to find a, just statistically, in order to find a level one leader, you have to train about 10 people to find a level, a level one leader. So existing Christians, they say about 10% stick. So you, you train 100, you get 10. It's not rocket science. You get about 10 level one leaders that are actually willing to put this into practice and start to sow seeds, enter new fields and sow seeds. And out of those out of those ones, you'd say that, that out of uh, uh, 100, 100 level one leaders, you would get about 10%. So 10% here, 10% of um, level one leaders that we train actually become church planners. And 10% of the level two leaders, the church planners, you actually get church, plant, uh, church planning multipliers. And then 10% of those become level four and so on and so forth. So how many people would you need to train to be able to get one strategy coordinator? 100,000. Is it 100,000? So we got the first one, so you're gonna be training. Somebody help me out here. Is it 100,000 or 10,000? 10,000, yeah. You need 10,000 L1s, which means you need to be training 100,000 Christians. Is that right? Yeah. So 100,000 Christians, 10,000 L1s, 1,000 L2s, 100 L3s, 10 L4s, 
to find that one individual. So in terms of the time commitment, this is where, how many of this is, this is a valuable activity, is to be able to train a lot of people so that we can find the L1, people that will actually grab a hold of it. And this is why, you know, the 411 and things like that, three circles, you can train a whole bunch of people because we need to raise up an army. We looked at the brutal facts. On one side, we see the people that are lost, but we actually have a huge pool of hundreds of thousands of Christians that are just, they're, they're not even an L1. We need a lot of L1s in, in order to be able to see no place left. So we're starting to invest our time here into the L1s and then ultimately the L2s. But then the, the 60 to 90 days, this is where the, the bell curve begins to, the, you want to max out really on the L3 leaders here. Now, in terms of time, uh, in terms of monetary investment and raising finances for people, uh, who do you think that we should, we should really be focusing on supporting? The multipliers. So the bread and butter really are the L3s. But how many know we need a lot of L3s? Mm. Which means that we actually need a lot of L3s that are actually bivocational. Because in order to see a movement, we can't pay anyone. Yeah. This is what... Um, <clears throat> if, we pray, if we pay, for, you know, some churches, they might pay evangelists to, to sow seeds and different things like that. But how many know that's actually... That's, that should be a spiritual discipline. You're not going to pay people to just spend time with the Lord on a daily basis. And we should be equipping more people to be able to plant churches. And so ultimately, I guess the, the time investment is we need a lot of L3s. And this is, I think that you see things like this in India, where basically it's, it's no cost. You're seeing movements that are just breaking out like crazy. But the investment really somewhere between the L3s and L4s and, and 5 and beyond. So good. I remember in Steve book, Steve's book, uh, he said that uh, there was a bunch of church planning uh, planners in Africa, and they said, "How many churches are you going to plant?" And they said, "25 or something like that." And I said, "Why? Where'd you where'd you come up with that number?" Is is that that is specifically the amount that we can get in terms of our buildings that, that has been sent from the U.S. So it's limited by a budget, but this way, it's unlimited to be able to see a movement. Okay. So in this level, typically the training has to do with best practices. So we can train them in simple tools like the three circles, like the 411, like the commands of Christ, the three thirds. But past this point, we have best principles. So this is not a tool to kind of identify where, where am I on this or where are you on this list, but to be able to identify people that we are training to be able to say, hey, what, is, what are things that these ones would need in order to be able to step forward? So tra the transition from, what do you think that some kind of stockages or some limitations from getting somebody from an L1 to an L2? Fear? Fear? From an L1 to an L2? I think, I th I, I, many times I find that the major fear has to do with from zero to L1, where people are actually begin to step out. I suppose that there could, are, are you talking about in terms of, oh, I, I don't know if I could actually be, if I feel competent, so there's a fear attached to actually starting a church or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Wait, L2, is that, because I just see a bunch of dots. Is that L1 is a seed sower? L2 is a church planner. There you go, that's a L1. Yeah, I think fear is a, the, biggest, the biggest area where you're dealing with fear is actually between the kind of the zero to the one. I'd say lack of vision would um, prevent you from getting to L2 from L1. Lack of seeing the big picture. Yeah. Time. Vision. Mm. Time. 
clear path. They don't have a clear path. They don't really know what to do next. Mm. I think there's a lot of a lot of, a lot of L1 leaders that are out there that just don't know what to do next. Mm. Okay, we share the three circles. They pray the prayer. They can tell the testimony. Now what? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you, you're, you're, I, I think that links into that last um, that last last question there. Yeah. That that they need some practical next steps. Mm. Finding a house of peace. Finding a house of peace. Yeah. 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 Even those ones, the first ones, to let them know the, the bigger vision that they are called to be like Christ from the beginning. Yeah. So that they already know, hey, this is big. Yeah, that's really good. They will see the, the God's dream. I feel like intentionality also is that's been a major thing. You know, we were running out many, many outreach teams on a Thursday night, and uh, we were seeing plenty of people that were that were making decisions for Christ, but we hadn't actually carved out time in our schedule to be able to follow them up. And so a lot of these ones were just falling by the wayside. That's why I love the House of Peace strategy because you're just going out, you're going out one week, and you're trying to find somebody that's going to be open, somebody that receives both the messenger the message and the mission. And then the following week, the first point of call is that you're not just sowing seeds, you're transitioning into yeah. discipleship and ultimately church planning. Okay, so what do you see as a, uh, a potential barrier from going from a level two to a level three? Character, lack of character. Not releasing, yeah. And I feel like that's probably the biggest thing for me. It's like, well, you know, we have to, if, if we're not giving people a go, a chance to be able to step out, we're not actually raising other people. But I think that the expectation is, especially around this, is that it's built around a single personality. And this is where I found the biggest, the biggest transition, not that, that we're, you know, fully up to, uh, to L3, but I know that the, the, ch the, the difference is in level two, the thing is about attracting people to a gifting and people can be impressed by that gifting if it's some, I can do something that nobody else can. Whereas the transition from here to here is where you actually have to be able to do something, you've got to do something that everybody else can. You've got to actually lower the bar rather than trying to have it as high as possible. What else? Lack of character, not releasing. I was going to say before, like the other ones as well, intimacy. Like if we're not, like as we all know, but if we're not intimate with God, we're not even going to desire to go out and reach the lost. Like we're not even going to sure. model Jesus at all. Like we're not going to represent his character. Abiding, yeah. It's good. I think that that's, that's applicable all the way along. Yeah. yeah. Faith, yeah, great. What else? Yeah. It's kind of like an ad, it's an ad, addition mindset versus a multiplication one yeah. mindset. Yeah, come on. Budget? Sorry? Budget? Budget? Can you, can you expand on that? Okay, so if you're looking at your model, well then you've got to build a church for each, uh, sorry, you've got to build a building for each church. Yeah. Whereas if you've got several churches popping up all at once, well then you want to limit to 25 churches. Exactly, yeah. Or whatever the budget allows. Yeah. So if multiplication is based on every single one of these four generation churches actually has a physical building, then that's going to slow the whole process down. Yeah. Not having support, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, so probably twofold, right? So there's a lack of a team. You might feel, feel kind of isolated and perhaps a lack of coaching. So this is where there is major coaching that is, is, being, is, is needed. That's why the 60 to 90 days is absolutely crucial. I mean, no, that's, that's where, where Paul's real, Paul's real success came. Not when he preached on the biggest stage, but it was actually found in these leaders that he had invested into. That's where he found his true success. Yeah. Yeah, come on. So good. Yeah. Complacency. Complacency. Yeah. Being able to identify other leaders. Being able to uh, identify other leaders. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. So, what about from level three to level four? What are some challenges there? So potentially some doctrinal issues, yeah. Probably losing focus of the initial start. Yeah. That losing focus of the vision. Mm-hmm. We are Christ ambassadors. We're here to, in this movement together, but people lose focus. It could be like loss of vision of that intentional why why we're doing this. Okay. Yep. So do you, do you all understand the difference between the transition between the, the level three and the level four? So what's the major difference between the two? No, the leader's leaving. Yeah. So, so he's, he's moving to other areas mm. to be able to catalyze movements. So he's a lot more mobile, yeah. So compared to this one, this guy can just, he can just drill down locally, he can be investing into that. But what, what, what are some challenges he's going to have to deal with now that he's, he's, he's not on the ground as much as he used to be. Yeah. 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 So lack of momentum. So you got you got your your people uh, to be able to release your people into this. Hey, what we can say called. That's right, yeah. So they have even less control of what happens. So I think this is actually a major thing between L3s and L4s as well, is that at this, at, with, when you got, if you're just a level two leader, that's our church, but when you start to have multiple streams, what happens when you get past four generations? It's not about our name anymore. Mm. The same thing when you get to level three to le- level four, I mean, this might be your movement, but now you're moving to level four, and this is what I think is just amazing about this team, that has actually on the ground being able to catalyze, work with us. You can't really stick your brand or your logo on it, can you? Does it become political? That's a good question. <laughs> Troy's pointing to Steve. Does it become political at that point? No, we were just fooling around with Noah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the question. Sundell, who's had a big impact on a lot of us, and uh, 
there came a day where Jeff said, well, Steve, uh, I'm really not available anymore, you know, maybe occasionally. You really need to talk to Troy. And so I started interviewing Troy. And then after a while, Troy starts feeding me names, Steve, you know, I don't mind talking, but really, you, you, you really ought to talk to this guy and this guy. And what they're doing, so their names are known by, by the people that they're investing in yep. and in heaven. But what they're doing is you don't grow in that unless you take people with you. The way you move from an L1 to an L2 is you help uh, people start sowing the seed. The way that you move from L2 to L3 is you help other people, seed sowers, become church planters. You don't get to L3 by, I'm going to start six myself. Well, that's you in the middle and six dots and every night out. <laughs> you know? yeah. So, the, and this is what Jesus did. The, the, you still see the movement unfold, but it's because everybody's giving everyone a, a help up to the next level. Or sometimes it's because you're saying to a multiplier at L3, um, you need to keep what you're do doing what you're doing with excellence. Yeah. And we'll bring some guys to watch what you do because you're the best at this. And because um, some of the best L4s are very ordinary seed sowers and church planters. They've done it, but that's not their strength. Um, so it's, it's more an environment of... Uh, servanthood but not doormat you're serving because God's given you a cause and you're bringing other people with you and that's that's yeah you know come on thank you and I think that this has been I just think that that's been amazing just to see that model I mean you see well what did you notice about the training team here that probably the majority of the sessions are actually done by local Australians when you think the chances are these guys will probably do a better job if they were up here at the front. But the purpose is not to do the training, but is actually to raise up a local team. Yes. Yes. And I think that's a powerful yes. paradigm shift, yeah. I just want to make one one comment also in terms of the tools. I know that the team is so is so gracious in terms of the tools that are being given out, and this you you got your own tool. But for me, I look at the tools, and and I'm I, I'm an innovator, and I'm thinking, man, you could change this, you could change that. This is how my mind is wired, and I'm thinking, hey, I haven't actually gotten to fourth, I haven't gotten to fourth generation yet. I want to get I want to get to to fourth generation and beyond because these tools are actually multiplying at the moment. So I want to I want to immerse myself into that, into the best practices before and to, to begin to dig up those best principles. So I, I would encourage you, you know, if you haven't got a tool at the moment, these these are these tools are multiplying for generation and beyond. I mean, like how many times has it uh, has anyway? Hey, I'd love to. I, I was going to talk about Haiti uh, just just in a moment, but I, I wonder if you guys could just tell a few stories of how that's that's played out, and then uh, landed on. Oh, five, it would be awesome. Can you give a, give a big a hand for Troy Cooper? How about this guy right here? 